Hey guys and welcome back to the channel. Now today we are taking a look at the molecular add-on. So I will show you a couple of settings that are key to using the molecular add-on. We'll be just using a cube, simple icospheres. And again, like always, this is going to be a free source file that you can download from my Gumroad, which will be in the link in the description. Make sure you subscribe and like the video because I put out these videos every week. Let's get into the video. As always, I'm using Blender 2.91 right now. I think it's 2.91. So the shortcuts are going to be showing in the left bottom corner. Now let's set up our system. So I'm going to delete everything in the scene, press X, delete everything like that. I'm going to go into front view, numpad one, A, add a cube. This is going to be my collision plane. So we need something that our particles are going to fall on. Okay, so let me size that on the Z like that. So I have a nice plane like that. And let me S shift Z and scale it like that. We do this because you need to have a thickness to your collision. Otherwise, you will have issues simulating your particles. Uh, before we move on, let's go under our physics tab and just enable the collision. Now we can play with friction and damping, but we won't be doing this in this tutorial. I'll be just showing you how to create different settings with the molecular add-on. So one way I like to use the molecular is by using it within a cube. So I'll go shift A and add a cube. I'm gonna push it up there, resize it, Control A to reset the scale. Make sure you reset the scale, otherwise you might have issues further on. And I'm going to instantiate a, I think it's an icosphere. Yeah, icosphere. So I'm gonna add an icosphere there. Reselect my cube. I'm gonna go under the particle systems, add a particle system. And now it's time to set up this system. Let me go with Z into wireframe so you'll see what's happening. You have this singular little line over here. We don't need that. We'll actually click on the end and set the end frame to be one. This means that all thousands of these particles are showing at the same time. Let me set the lifetime to 120. So this is, let's say, the duration of our animation. And I want the lifetime to match with the end of our animation. So end is 120 frames, lifetime is going to be 120. Now comes the fun part. So you're going to click on source emit from volume, and you can see that now all of the particles are emitting from the actual volume of the cube. And then I'm going to go distribution grid. And this positions them in a nice little organized group. A uh, fun thing about this is you can increase the resolution. So you can play with the resolution. And this is going to actually dictate the amount of particles in your system. I think a Resolution of 16, in this case, it's gonna be fine. Uh, once we're done with that, uh, there's two more things. I usually check the rotation dynamic and I go under physics and I do the deflection part with the size deflect. Now I do this because this actually prevents the particles from clipping through the plane. Next, render, and instead of the render as halo, I'll choose the object. And there's an eyedropper here that you can click select your icosphere and this is going to instantiate it in the cube. Increase the scale, but be careful. Don't increase it so that the edges are clipping because usually that presents some issues. I usually go as close as possible, let's say to about there. Again, making sure that everything is reset in scale. Now it's time to open our molecular. So the molecular add-on, you can find it in the link that I've shared below. You can download it. If you don't know how to install add-ons in Blender, you simply go to Edit, Preferences, and then you, and under Add-ons, you choose Install, and then select the file, zip or RAR file that you've downloaded, and that's going to install the add-on, and it should appear here. Now, I had some issues with the molecular add-on in 2.91. Uh, it was a bit unstable. It had some very inconsistent results. So hopefully this one is going to work out. But yeah, fingers crossed. So you can see start frame, end frame are matching. That's all fine and dandy. Calculate particles weight by density. So this is going to simulate the density of, let's say, sand. I usually use it for sand. It has some really interesting physics applications. Uh, activate self collisions and collisions with other. This means that the particles are actually going to collide, uh, which I still don't understand why is an issue in native Blender uh, particle system. Particle linking and particle linking with others. Now, these are very interesting categories. Now, 
You might be confused by all of these settings, and I'm gonna be honest, I'm confused too, half of the time, but I found some that are very interesting. So let me just prep this. So I'm gonna make this the properties, and I'm going to have a just a start simulation here. So start molecular simulation, so I don't have to scroll all of the time, since we'll be mostly working with these two groups. Now, if I start this molecular animation, you can see this is how it behaves. So the particles are actually colliding. There is a good dynamic, let's say, behavior to their movement. It's it's okay. It's fine. Now comes the fun part. So the linking thing is basically creating a link between uh, different spheres, different particles. So let me free that bake and let me restart the simulation. And now these should be more connected. So this is, let's say, one thing that's very interesting with this one. Let me just close this. So it's very interesting how this stuff works. It's kind of kind of amazing. So this is like now a lump of various particles that are behaving like that. So you can see how they lump together. Now, let me free that bake and let's explore this. One type of animation that I saw that was really interesting was when the particles are actually in a very stiff cube. They still perform as particles, but they look more like a soft body. And I think you can achieve that by actually using this. So you uncheck the relative, which means that the distance of the particle radius for the linking is going to be set to the search length of one. I don't know what this one means. I just know that when I start to bake this simulation, the particles actually st stay together like sort of a soft body. And it's such a cool effect that you can get with a relatively low number of particles. And there's so many good applications for this. You can, for example, animate like a bar that's going to cut through the whole thing. You can animate slicing. It just creates this whole new level of particle behavior. It's really interesting. But let's say I want this to be very stiff. So how do I control that? Well, this is where these guys come in place. So this is the broken. Now, the broken, like it says, how much links can stretch before they are broken. So 1%. One thing that I found out is if you go down, it's going to make them um, like not really stiff, so they should break much more, which you can see here. There is actually some, almost like some sort of plastic deformation happening to them, which is really interesting. And you can also take it to like a different level by just dropping this broken, let's say to 0 0.05, and let's do the same to the one that's below with the new linking at collision. So let's start this molecular simulation and it just crumbles. It has this crumbling effect while the top is still like straight. And this is so interesting. When you think about it, there's again, many, many, many interesting applications for this in terms of MoGraph animation, that sort of stuff. Now let's try the broken at one and near one and let us restart. And now this should be really stiff. And you can see that it is stiff. It still deforms in that way. And it keeps like this sort of plastic deform type of thing. But it's really, it, it, it's insanely cool when you see it. Let us just increase the distance right now. So I'm gonna pull them up there, restart the bake. Let's see when they fall from a higher. So they also respect the gravity. They respect what's happening with the height. They respect everything. And you see this beautiful type of deformation. Just for kicks, let's recheck the relative. And now let's see what happens when we have the relative checked. So you can see that they, again, fall down in this sort of mound type of thing. Again, I think the most satisfying results are without the relative. So you uncheck the relative and then just play around with these settings. It's so interesting. You have the stiffness of the links, uh, damping of the links. It's such an interesting process, but I don't want to go into stiffness and damping because I think that even just with these settings, like the broken settings, you can do so much with this type of animation. I'm planning on doing like a animation with a bar or a slicer or something in the future. So let me know down in the comments if you'd like to see something like that. I think it would be mega interesting. So yeah.
So yeah, this is gonna be it for this tutorial. Now, what I want you to do for your assignment is maybe try the system with another primitive. Maybe try using a different collision type. So be free, just do whatever you feel like doing and make sure you tag me in your creations on Instagram at Blataday. Now, this is going to be a free source file that you can download, tinker with it. If you enjoyed this video, drop a like, leave a comment. I always read those, I always enjoy those. And yeah, I'll see you in the next one.